I've entitled this message for you, The Three Main Stages of Christian Growth. The Three Main Stages of Christian Growth. Growing in the Spirit. Growing in your maturity in Christ. Coming to understand who He is in our lives and who we are in Him Growing in the Lord. Now that's a big subject, saying, all right, we're going to discuss maturing in Christ. We're going to, what are the stages? You know, mankind, uh, human nature seems to always want to put things in some sort of categories and stages and levels and, and how to, and, and it helps us to process. That's why we have, uh, quote unquote, systematic theology. We take theology and put it into categories. We systematize it in order to help us to better understand the things of God and the things of life. Well, the three main stages of Christian growth I believe can be summarized very, very easily, and you can help, you can allow this message to, uh, to uh, find out where you're at in the Lord and in a variety of different settings, because sometimes we are maturing in one area, but not maturing in another. Sometimes we're growing in one area, but we're not growing in another. Sometimes we're giving up something for the Lord in one area, but we're not in another area. And so you'll find that this is a continual pattern in our lives as we grow in the Lord of what He wants us to do and where He's bringing us. And so in this, the stage number one, the stage number one is, and it's very, very simple, give up. Stage number one, give up. That's the number one stage, give up. When you think about it, we're trained, we're trained as you're training to never give up. So true? That stand your ground. And, and matter of fact, I preach it on a regular basis. True? Don't give up. Stand your ground. Stand fast in the... But it's stand fast in the faith. It's surrender unto God. It's not an issue of just being a quitter. Oh, good. Good. Stage number one. I'm a quitter. That's what I... All right, I'm, I've already passed that. No, it's not imagine of, it's not an, a, a, a message of uh, we're all going to be quitters. It's that you surrender to who or to what. Everybody in this room is surrendering yourself to somebody or something. You can't escape that. Many people are surrendering their daily lives to the alcoholic bottle. They surrender every day, get up, and their will finds themselves at the end of a bottle. They surrender to it. Some surrender to wrath. That uh, they get sick of life and they just finally just surrender themselves to it and just have an outburst of wrath. And, and there's a certain pleasure in that. And others will surrender themselves uh, to, uh, to the pleasures that this world has to offer or the, or the endeavors and ambitions that are here. There's a variety of things that, that are calling for you to surrender your attention, to surrender your affections, to surrender your appetites, to surrender your personhood, to surrender your desires, to surrender who you are to it. That we're called to surrender. As a matter of fact, when, when you're looking at any type of uh, 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 law situation or any type of criminal situation, and the police finally come to and get their man, what's the first thing that they're called to do? What's that first thing they're after? Give up. First thing, give up. That's the very first thing. Now, giving up or surrendering is another word for it. Give up is basically I surrender. You're placing yourself into the authority of another. You're placing yourself under the hands, the authority measure of another. Authority is a very real part of Christian, matur ma Christian maturity. Because you'll find that in you, in your flesh, in your human nature, you want to be in charge. In this God Almighty is calling for us to surrender, just as Christ surrendered. We're called to surrender to the things of God, to surrender to His Word, to surrender to His holiness. But I want it like my way. Well, and you have a hostage situation. What does the criminal want to do? He starts going through various terms. I want to, well, I'm going to surrender if I, if you and they're going through a variety of terms that before I surrender, I'm going to go through. But God, it's an unconditional surrender. Does that make sense? Christian maturity begins. The very first place to begin always is with an absolute, unconditional, 100% surrender 
to the things of God. You place yourself into the authority of another. You place yourself under the authority of another. A sovereign control who's greater than you. Now think of it. Please think of this now. Is that if you surrender to God, you will never have to surrender again. If you surrender to God, you will never have to surrender ever again. If you, sur if you surrender fully and wholly to God's Spirit, fully and wholly to the Word of the Lord, if you are in full surrender, you can now live a victorious life. Now, victory and surrender don't seem to go together. If you fully surrender to God, you can now live a victorious life. And if you are in a realm of surrendering to anything else other than God, then you have surrendered to something that's weaker than God. Then you have surrendered yourself to weakness, not strength. You've surrendered yourself to defeat, not victory. If we have fully surrendered to God, if we have fully surrendered to His Spirit, then we are operating our lives now in a realm and a sphere and a stage of victory. No longer are we in the stage of weakness. Many people have often said that they're a free spirit and that they just enjoy life and I don't want to give up my fun without the realization that you're in bondage. That person's in bondage. The absolute key to life is to fully surrender to God Almighty. In that is where a person gains great victory. Anything other than God, anything less than God, which is how much, or anyone? Is there anything, anything greater than God? Anything that's more powerful than God? Anything that He's the sovereign ruler of all things? If you surrender to Him, then you have total victory over everything else that is weaker than Him. You never have to surrender ever again. Just have to live a constant life of, I surrender my will to you. I surrender my ambitions to you. I surrender my appetites to you. I surrender this body to you. I surrender to you, Lord, my hopes, my dreams. You're the center. Jesus, be all in me. Jesus, let Jesus be in me. No longer me, Lord, but thee. Resurrection power, fill me this hour. Jesus, be Jesus in me. But if we're not operating in the surrender unto the Lord, then somebody and something else is in charge, and usually that's you. And if you want to mess things up, keep calling the shots. Jesus is the absolute key. Now, people don't want to surrender. They want to keep doing it their way. Uh, you know, the old saying of do as much as you can until you can't do one more thing, then God takes over. That's a lie. Fully surrender from day one, from stage one. You want to fully surrender all that you are, all that you'd want to be, all your pains, all everything you have, surrender it unto Him. No longer me, Lord. Doesn't mean part you. No longer me, Lord. I surrender how much? All. It doesn't say do as much as you can and then it's I surrender all so that all of Him now operates in my life. In that you have full victory. I am in a surrender stage. I'm in the, I'm in the caught stage. Uh, I've been caught. I'm, uh, when a person's caught, they're in a situation where they, they don't know where else to turn. Do you ever see like an animal caught in a corner? That it, it doesn't know where else to turn. It starts bumping into the walls hoping for a hole. It starts trying to scurry around. It's, it's looking for a way out. It's caught. You see the criminal where all of a sudden they're, they're caught, they're surrounded, authority has come, law is over them, calling for justice, they're caught. Oftentimes I see people caught in this stage of, of Christian development where they, they don't know where else to go, they don't know what else to do, they feel so squeezed, the Holy Spirit is just, just squeezing them. The, the, the Christianity, the Word of God, the truth is just keeps squeezing them in there. And they, but they haven't surrendered yet. They're still in the process of, I, I can't bring myself to surrender yet. They're still in the realm of trying to hold on, and they don't understand what's going on in my life. Have you ever been through that? If you haven't been through that, then have you surrendered? Have you been through that? That you've, that you've come to a point that you had to surrender. I remember that in my life. I remember it oftentimes in my life of surrendering, 
certain aspects of who I am or difficulties or who I thought I was. One of the greatest things that I had to surrender to the Lord was my perception of who I was. The perception of who I thought I was. I had to surrender. Listen to me now. You had to surrender the perception of who you think you are. That you think you're greater than this, you're able to do that. I've seen pride operate in people to the greatest levels that have nothing to be prideful of. And yet they're full of pride. In this we must be in that realm. The very first stage is bringing a person to the point where I have decided to surrender. But most people haven't felt the squeeze of life yet. They haven't felt that caught feeling yet where there's, they still have other alternatives, other ways of thinking, other ways of doing things. Gee, I'm still, at least I go to church and at least I'm a decent fella. And gee, I was comparing myself to this person and that person and I'm not like them, so I'm pretty decent. They haven't yet come to that realm where they're caught where they actually feel they've been arrested by God. You're now in his hands. You're now in his cuffs. You're now in that you've been, that you're in a realm where you've been caught, you've been arrested, and you're now under his authority. Most people, many people that you talk with, haven't reached that point where they've actually surrendered. If you look at this, a person who will stand out is probably Judas. Judas never surrendered. Though with Christ, Never came to a point of surrendering. Never surrendered at all. Another person that you might want to think of is Pilate. Pilate who never surrendered, couldn't surrender. Well, well, what is truth in a mocking sort of way? What is truth when he's staring right at it? Christ himself. And so how does he handle it? I'll just wash my hands of the whole thing. See, it, and I have no part in it. When in actuality, you fail to surrender to the things of God. You have failed to surrender to the, and recognizing that you are already in his grasp. So in this, we must come to this point of realizing that we've been caught and that we've been arrested. And this is an area that God Almighty is continually calling for you and I to surrender who we are to our life. I've seen some people surrender certain aspects of their life, but hold back others. Where they're willing to surrender in the sense of, all right, I'll start giving some of my time. I'll even, I'll even start writing a check or, or I'll even start hanging around, coming to certain things. But they're still holding on to, I call the shots though. I'm the one who through the course of the day, I'm the one who's determining what's best for me. I'm still hanging on. They haven't surrendered yet maybe their will. Just maybe some of their time, some of their finances, uh, their, their reading and their fellowship. But they haven't surrendered in the sense, maybe they're still hanging on to some bitterness, some offense. They still haven't come to the point where they're willing to yield fully. Well, you know, I, I know enough to at least I'm getting into heaven. You're not in the realm of surrender yet. You haven't felt that that encounter with the Lord where he's got you, where you felt so squeezed that, that you're so cut off from God, you're so squeezed in his hands that you have no place else to turn but to throw yourself onto the mercy of the judge. Many people haven't, they're, they're self-reliant. They're able to operate their lives in a certain realm of, yeah, well, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a pursuer of God, but I would call myself that I'm a decent fellow and I've, I had an encounter with the Lord once. I'd, I'd say I'm born again. You haven't entered that realm of total surrender yet. I surrender all yet. That's where the power and the victory comes. That's where the love just explodes. The joy comes. The peace develops. That's what you're looking for. Surrendering. Surrendering to Christ's spirit. Surrendering to the Holy Spirit. Not in part, but the whole. Not fragmented, but everything that you have decided to follow him fully and wholly. All of your wills, all your wants, all your whims, everything that you have, it's yours, Lord. I surrender. When you reach that point, you are in stage one. Stage one. I surrender. I stage one. Think of the areas of your life that maybe you have not yet surrendered. Think of the areas in your life that even in dealing with people, you're ministering to them. And you'll find that they're not willing to surrender. You want to have a tough time trying to lead someone to the Lord. It's someone who's not ready to surrender. That they're still kind of just kind of tough in the heart. Tough in the mind. Tough in the spirit. Still hanging on to. Still, well, you know, I, I don't know if it needs to be that way. Can it be this way instead? No. No, it's not. But yet, well, it seems to me that it could just, it's, it's a little harsh. A little too absolute for me. Seems to me it can be a little bit more relative to my situation. Boy, are you a deceived person. 
Since when is it all about you? Never. It's always been all about him. God Almighty is the absolute key. I've heard pastors getting up on TV and in services, coming up and saying, now Lord, we give you permission for the, to be in this service. What? What? We give you permission to be in this service? He's giving you permission to be in the service. <laughs> I was listening to a sermon just last night, which inflamed me. And I see those on a regular basis. And I'm watching TV and, uh, and the, I'm watching this preacher. And, and all of a sudden he just starts talking in such manner. In that, uh, uh, that uh, uh, we're going we're gonna to release you. We're going to give our, give your, that's what it is. We'll give your donation today and and. Uh, and authorize God to release his blessing to you. Since when do we authorize him? He authorizes you. Since, that'd be like me saying, I think I'm going to anoint the Holy Spirit today. Lord, I'm going to anoint you today to be in this service. Boy, is that an arrogance. He's the anointer. He's the authorizer. He's the permission granter. He's the graceful one. We're the recipients of everything. He's everything. We're nothing until he touches our souls, our life, and enlivens us and quickens us. Then we become something in Jesus. He's the center. And so many people are sitting like, and in, 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 well, I don't know. I, I like it. And they're sitting and they're holding on to and they're not willing to surrender to the things of God. The Pharisees wouldn't surrender to Christ. The Pharisees who were always around and ready to test and ready to judge and ready to critique and I don't know if it should be that way and it should be and they're always trying to hold on to their place and they weren't willing to surrender. And when a person has a Pharisee spirit, when a person has an aspect in their life, well gee I'm not a Pharisee, I wouldn't say I'm like that, but maybe there's an aspect of your life that you're hanging on that's like that that's not willing to yield fully and wholly to and is always holding things in his courtroom of judgment, always holding things under the critical eye, always looking for error rather than truth. You want to find someone who's operating in error? It's somebody who's always looking for error rather than looking for truth. People who, who are always looking at church and people always with a wary eye, not willing to surrender, always looking at the Bible looking for fault, rather than looking for truth. This is stage one. Yielding to stage one is surrender, is give up, is I'm caught, it's I'm arrested, it's I'm yours, I'm in your hands. Stage two, just because a person now is surrendered, just because a person has given up, the next step is what? Give in. Give in. The next step is give in. A person can be arrested, brought to the jailhouse, now being interrogated, but it doesn't mean that they're ready to comply. It doesn't mean they're ready to submit. I've seen even in my own kids, all right, surrender. They're giving up their will. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, to, I've realized I can't change the situation. But in their heart, they're still hanging on to McDonald's, not Wendy's. <laughs> There's a, I'm, I'm holding my ground. There's a, there's, a, there's a stiffness in the soul. There's a stiffness in the spirit of, all right, I'll do what you said, but I'm not doing it because I like it, but it's because I'm under your authority and it's better if I do it. But there's not a, a willingness to submit. It's the whole submission issue. That word that, we, that is constantly throughout scripture, but everyone would rather have it cut out. It's the giving in to. It's the will is dominating where you realize that it's better for you to comply than it is for you to continually buck against it. It's a call to comply. It's a call to I allow this in my life. I'm, allow I'm yielding to it. I'm letting it happen. I want God in my life. If you get to stage two, you'll realize that that's where victory and freedom and joy start bubbling up. Where all of a sudden you realize saying, wait a minute, I don't have to carry this burden. I don't have to carry this offense. You mean I'm free from that bitterness? You mean if I yield to his joy, I'm free from depression? Yeah. You mean if I yield to his peace? Boy, I'd have peace if that person was to stop treating me that way. 
If this person would stop calling me, if this person was, I'd have peace. The peace isn't that way. Peace is within. Peace is that regardless of these situations, your peace is not robbed. When a person starts submitting to the holiness of God, and they realize that I'm no longer subject to these worldly things. I'm no longer subject to the bondage of these pleasures. When I start submitting to, well, you can't submit. Now listen, you can't submit beyond the level of your surrender. Listen now, you cannot submit beyond the capacity that you've surrendered. Can't do it. Your submission will not go any deeper than the capacity that you are willing to surrender. A person is called to give in. I am, you'll find that when you're talking with me on a regular basis, I'm urging you, I'm encouraging you, I'm calling for you to continue to give in to the Holy Spirit. Because that's where the power is. That's where the, that's where the presence is. That's where the boldness is. That's where the confidence is. That's where the calmness of spirit is. That's where the anointing is. That's where we're called to, not my will, Lord, but yours. I'm yielding to it. I'm complying with it. I'm allowing this to happen in my life. I'm letting go, and I want you in my life. I'm praying and calling for the spirit of grace to come into my life and to empower me. I don't want to be like Herod Agrippa who heard the word of the Lord and wasn't willing to surrender to the things of God therefore could never submit to the word of God therefore walked out in the same deception that he walked in with I don't want that Lord I want to surrender to you Lord I want to surrender and I want to submit meaning I want to comply with your holiness I want to comply with and allow your spirit to change my life when a person reaches this area they're level number two they're giving in. If you haven't come, if submission is still kind of like down the line for you, you're in the surrender stage. The surrender. I surrender. I give up. But the giving in stage, you'll find that that's where your real battle is. The giving in stage. Whereas, why do I even have to be dealing with this stage? Why, why can't I kind of go back to the way it used to be? The Hebrews in the wilderness used to do that. Can't we go back to Egypt where we ate vegetables? We were on the taskmaster's hands, but at least we ate good. That's that battle of they haven't surrendered in their heart. They still have unbelief. Submission can only go to the level that a person has surrendered. But the submission level is where you and I and everyone needs to be and will continually call for. And you'll find the certain aspects in your life that you'll submit in one area, but you won't submit in another. You'll submit maybe where it's easy to submit, but you're not willing to submit those harder areas. I find people regularly are struggling in that area of submission, coming into alignment with the things of God. You know who this will remind you of? Who knows the story of Samson? I would say almost everybody in this room. Anybody know the story of Samson? All right, story of Samson. Samson surrendered. He was a judge and he surrendered. But who failed to submit? Who failed to comply? Who failed to walk in the authority, the power, and the freedom of God's spirit? Samson. He wasn't able to operate in the level of submission because he couldn't give in. He kept giving in to that which was not the spirit. He kept giving in. Remember his eye wandered over to Delilah. Delilah. The minute he was wandering over, he was only able to submit to the level he was willing to surrender. He didn't surrender here, he surrendered here instead. He submitted to and placed himself under the authority of another. Placed himself under the authority of another who had no good thoughts for him. We are surrender machines. We are submission machines. We are always giving up and we are always giving in. What you give up to and what you give into determines your authority. The Bible tells us that do you not know that what you yield to, what you serve, becomes your master? So, why not have God, and there's nothing greater than God, the Spirit of the living God, be your master? How does that happen? Submit, give in fully and wholly to Him. And he is now the one who will set you free, fully and wholly. Samson 
never found the freedom, never found that realm where he was able to just walk in the freedom of God. Able because he was always submitting to those other pleasures, always looking at foreign things, always looking at those areas of pleasures that were beyond the things of God, beyond the realm of, of his authority. And he placed himself into those other areas. Another person you might want to think of is King Saul. King Saul, who again, could not submit to the Spirit of God, the Word of God, the holiness of God, the, the authority of God. He was told what to do, but didn't submit to it. He surrendered in the sense of, I'm king, but his surrender only went so far, and his submission followed along. So when pressed, when squeezed, when all of a sudden no priest was showing up, meaning Samuel, to offer the sacrifice, and he's got war, and the people are clamoring that we've got the sacrifice, got to go to war, he takes the, the mantle of being a priest, and he's the one who does the act of a priest. And therefore, he causes himself to walk in disobedience. When all of a sudden he's told the word of the Lord that he's to kill and to annihilate this nation, that's the word that that's what's promised to them. And, they, and so he brings, he only does it partially because all of a sudden he's clamoring. He wants man's praise. He wasn't able to submit to the word of the Lord. Not able to give in. We're able to surrender some areas and submit to some areas, but to give up is to then give in. To yield to. To comply with His Word. To comply with His holiness. To allow God to speak to you. To listen to His Word. Even today. To listen to His Word. I would say that there's several people, if not more, in this room that even as I've gone through give up and to give in, the Lord has already shown you an area that you need to apply that to. I would say that there's areas in your life that already I haven't had to go through and say now you're not supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that and I've got a list of do's and don'ts for us to go through these are the things that I want you to do these are the things I don't want you to do I don't have to do that instead I believe the Holy Spirit has already spoken to many of you brought to remembrance many things of areas that you know you've been hanging on to that need to be surrendered or that you haven't fully given in to the Lord yet. If that is true, would you just give me a wave single? Is anybody else? That's the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's the Holy Spirit. I did that just so, not for a confirmation to me. I didn't do that to make sure, gee, I, I hope I'm online. Gee, I hope I'm not saying something. I did that so that you would know you're not alone. You're not alone. That... You're not here saying, it's just me. <laughs> Everyone else here is right with God and I'm not. Right? It's not just you. And you can trust the Holy Spirit is the one who will speak. How many would you like to go now? Would you like to go to someone that you know and tell them what they need to change? How many would raise a hand on that one? You'd like to go to someone right now and tell them this is what you need to change in your life. And if you do that, I'd be happier. Yeah, wouldn't you? Love to be able to go and do that. But have you noticed that that rarely ever works? You can't go and tell someone else because immediately they get a little bit, maybe what you call defensive side. Your own kids will buck you there. But... Have you noticed that I've not had to go once down the line saying, I prepared today's sermon. I'm going to start on the right and move around to the left. And I'm going to tell what each person needs to change and alter and do in their life. Do you notice that you don't have to do that? And everyone said, praise the Lord. <laughs> though, that, though those things do surface and I do see them. And do you notice that the Holy Spirit is the one who takes care of those things? But the encouragement of give it up and give it in. Why? Why? Why do I have to be under this taskmaster's hand? It's not taskmaster's hand. It's the freedom and the power of God. It's the, it's the, it's the victory. It's, it's to walk in victory. And you're not alone in this quest. You're not alone. There's everyone else in this room and many others who are not in this room who are dealing with that same area who they're in the giving up stage or they're in the giving in stage. And here's the third step. I got to give too.
the give to stage. I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give in. And here's the tough one. Give to. That's the third level. Give to. Well, you'll notice when you're talking with people or even when you're praying and you're analyzing yourself, oh, don't you hate that? When, you, when I say analyze yourself, is that you've submitted to the Spirit and allow Him to analyze you. That's true analyzing. In the give to stage, that's the quote unquote serve stage. And when you're in the serve stage, that means it's no longer about you. I'm now serving. I'm now pouring out stage. I'm in the Paul stage. I'm in the Paul stage where I'm willing to pour my life as a drink offering unto the Lord for the benefit of others. This is that I've decided to love others as I love myself. I've decided to move forward and allow God's Spirit to think of what others may need. This is the serve stage. The give to stage. And you can't get to the give to stage till you've gone into the giving in stage. And you can't do the giving in stage till you've done the give up stage. It's important to be a giver. And immediately most people think right away, ah, now he's talking about money. We've been so trained today to think that that's what it's all about. When in actuality you'll find that the giving stage is everything. How much of your money? All of it. How much of your time? All of it. How much of your talents and treasures? Everything. All of it. Who's it belong to? Him. Remember? No longer I, Lord, but you. It's all about Him. I'm in the giving stage now, in the serve stage, to give to another. Not looking as to, well, if I give here, I should be able to get that. We're not looking for, people are bothering with God now, that if you give this, you'll get, and that's not giving. That's giving with expectation. That's bothering. That's Canaanite thinking. Today's stage of giving is I surrender to you, giving up. I'm going to give in. I'm submitting. And I'm going to give too. That's the serve stage. If you look and you realize, remember Gideon? Gideon in the Old Testament, one of the judges once again. Whereas all of a sudden he's uh, the least of the least. He's on the threshing floor. He's hiding all the wheat because the, 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 the uh, uh, bandits would come in and steal everything. And all of a sudden the angel of the Lord comes and speaks to him and says, Oh mighty man of valor. Who? Me? No mighty man of valor. But the Lord spoke to him as to what he will be, what he shall be. And so all of a sudden he had to go through, first of all, the surrender stage. I'm going to, all right. And finally he comes to, and the testing and the whole thing, and finally he surrenders to it. And now he has to start submitting, giving in. Going to only go with 301. You're the one. 300. He had to start submitting to Boy, if I could just hear, what's their plan? How is this going to work? And he finally submits, where finally the Bible says that he worshipped God. He's finally submitted. And then he started serving God, serving the people. He's a perfect example of the giving up, the giving in, and the giving to. The Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. All of a sudden the Lord shows up. And the Lord's, all of a sudden in all his glory, shining upon him. And, and what's Paul? Where, where's he? He's all of a sudden just, he's overwhelmed by it all and, and what would you, he's going now to Damascus to persecute the church. He's got letters of authority. He's in control. And all, he's not giving up to anybody. He wants everybody to give up too. And he's all of a sudden on the march. But when he's confronted with the Lord, the first thing is, I surrender. Then it's, what would you have me to do? What would you have me to do? Submitting. And then what's his whole life show? Serving. Giving to. His whole life, serving. His whole life pouring his life out into others. Look at David. Look at Abraham. Look at all the great men of God. And any time that you look at someone who failed, you'll find that they gave up on an area of surrender or submission. Something faltered. They either weren't willing to surrender or they weren't willing to submit. They held on to something. And they never could reach that serve stage. Now why serve? That's where the blessing is. Victory is in the surrender stage. I surrender. And when you surrender, you'll find victory starts coming into your life. When you submit stage, 
joy starts coming, peace starts coming, the love starts coming, and you start replacing the old with the new, and the new creation in Christ starts blossoming. But where is the blessing stage? Can't we get to the blessing stage? That's what everybody's talking about, the blessing stage. The blessing stage is when you're no longer seeking the blessing stage. The blessing stage is when you're no longer seeking the blessing. When you desire instead to be a blessing. The blessing stage is when you're no longer looking for an offering, you now want to be one. That is the serve stage. That is the blessing stage. When God pours blessing into your life and you're not even looking for it. This is the stage of Christian maturity that God is calling us to and that God is calling this church to. The blessing stage. Lord, can't you just bless me with this? Can't you? Where instead you're looking to be a blessing. You're looking to be an offering. You're looking to pour your life to give to, to love others as you yourself would want to be loved. That you want to give what you yourself would like to receive and God will make sure it happens. But you're no longer bothering with God trying to get that. You're in the give to stage. You're no longer looking, I have to surrender this, I have to submit that, I have to get there. You're no longer in that battle. You're, instead, you're just giving. The giving stage. Giving of, you're thinking of how can I encourage someone today. When someone says, comes and speaks to you and, and you just want to help them to overcome and you're willing to speak the things of God to them, even though they might give you that wary eye, you're willing to speak the things of God and help them to mature because you know that if you can get them to that giving up stage, that they'll be next now to the giving in stage. And if you can get them to the giving in stage, they'll be into the giving to stage. And you'll find that's where the blessing is. How many times I call people and encourage them to come to church or to seek the Lord or to pray or to read their Bibles or to give them a verse and say, memorize this verse. This is a good verse for you. Why don't you memorize that? Not willing to do it. Don't do it. Gee, why does this have to keep going in my life? Why am I still struggling with this? Why can't, this have, why can't God just do it? And how many times I've told people is that, have you done your devotions today? Have you served the Lord today? Have you called anybody? Why doesn't anybody love me? Who did you love this past week? Why doesn't anybody call me? Who did you call this past week? Why doesn't, why doesn't, why can't, why can't? And all the time we're calling for people to, to get into these stages where we finally get past ourselves. You want to know who had trouble? Peter. Do you want to look at somebody who struggled with this? Peter. Look at Peter's life. There's a guy who struggled. He had a hard time surrendering. And when he finally surrendered, oh my, I have to submit? And when he finally submitted, now he's in the upper room, yielded vessel, ready to serve, ready to give to, ready to pour his life out. And even when he's rebuked sharply by Paul, he submits in all humility to it. He's no longer looking to raise himself up. He now wants to raise up others. The give to stage. Pouring your life into someone else's life. All of the Bible is filled with various examples of allowing ourselves to give up, give in, give to. To get into the stages of I surrender. I submit and I want to serve the Lord of all. I'm caught. I'm going to comply. I want to care. In the stages of I'm arrested. I'm going to allow. I want it to happen. It's time for me to act. So many different three-point messages all saying the same thing. The best way I have found to say it, give up, give in, give to. Best way I have found to be able to, ex to, ex to exhibit the things of God, to explain. Give up, give in, give to. Which stage are you in and what are God's to life? Think of it. Where am I? Where's my spouse? Where are my kids? Where now let's look at the kids. Look at them. What stage are they in? What, where's my battle? If they haven't yet approached the give up stage and you're trying to get them into the give to stage, <laughs> Don't you know it's better to give? They're not even in the surrender stage yet. If they're still all about them, it's going to be hard to give up unless they find there's something in it for them. Look at yourself. Look at your life. Ask yourself, what stage am I in regarding this? 
What stage are we after? I want to be, Lord, in the give to stage. That's where we belong. Jesus, be the center. Jesus, be all in me. Jesus, no longer me, Lord. I surrender all. How much? All. Big word. All. I surrender what? All. All that I am, my hopes, my dreams, everything that I have. Do you not know that your treasures that are in this world will pass away? Jesus said that, right? Put your treasures in heaven. He wasn't saying that idly as just some cool statement to match the philosophies of the day. He's saying it because it's true. To get into the stage where the only thing that matters is God. Why? That's where the blessing is. That's where the blessing comes into your life where all of a sudden you start realizing, I've got victory in my life. The joy, the peace, the love, the comfort of God, I'm able to now, people can say things or revile and it no longer implants itself in my life anymore filled with bitterness and offense. I'm no longer doing that anymore. Instead, I'm free. Lord knows where I am. And all of a sudden now, you, that's no longer bugging you anymore. You're not carrying it anymore. You know, I had a good week, but that person right there, they just ticked me off. You know, just... It just works on you and you carry it and you bugs you and you come to church and you're trying to praise God but you got that person's name on there on your mind all the time. And you start thinking evil of it. Yeah, I wish, I wouldn't mind somebody coming and setting them straight. And or something happens to them, you take a certain level of pleasure in it. I know that's not right for me to do but boy, I sure wouldn't mind them just to get a little bit of, you know. People depressed, walking depressed. If a person is depressed, I hate to tell you this, but if you're depressed because life is all about you. If you're a depressed person, you've made life all about you. Now that probably just depresses you more. And my intent is not to end this service with causing everybody to be depressed. But the joy of the Lord is not accompanied with depression. The joy of the Lord is not accompanied with taking a pill. The joy of the Lord is not euphoria, like I'm finally free. The joy of the Lord, the rejoicing in the Spirit, is because it's no longer about you, it's about Him. Right. It's no longer calling someone and saying, do you know what that pastor said during that sermon? That's not going to lead you to the joy. <laughs> I can trust that. I've been, my wife, I've been hit by the best of them. But it never did anything for them. The pleasures and the promises of God and the, and the blessings of God are all in surrendering, submitting, and serving. Getting to that level of saying, I'm going to serve. And the place to begin always, serve the Lord with gladness of heart. Serve the Lord and no one else. Serve the Lord by reading and studying His Word and memorizing certain scriptures that just minister to you. And say, I'm going to memorize that. I'm going to put it on a 3 by 5 card and I'm going to start memorizing that portion, that verse. I'm going to start, I'm still memorizing scriptures. 20 years later, I'm still memorizing scriptures. I'm just memorized Psalm chapter 9. I've been working on, on a couple of verses in there where the Lord is known by the judgment he executes. I, I came and I said, that's a powerful statement. I should have thought of that. <laughs> yeah. But all of a sudden, I'm looking at Psalm 9 and say, I, I need to memorize that. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. I said, man, that's a powerful. I just memorized that one just this past uh, week because want, I want to put that in my, in my life. So someone says, I want to know the Lord. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. That's powerful. So just ministering, saying, Lord, still hide that word in my heart. Help me to understand who you are, submitting constantly to the things of God. Serving the Lord with gladness of heart. Serving Him and making your life be Him the center of your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's where it's at. And you know what? I, I, gotta, I gotta tell you though. Don't allow. Don't allow in your life to get complacent with the things of God. Don't get that, eh, come see, come saw, what happened, eh, whatever. You know that indifference, that, com that com He wants you to comply, not become complacent. Complying with the things of God. I will seek you with all my heart. I had a hard week. I'm tired. I don't, I don't feel too well. I don't really feel like happening. I don't really want to go to church anymore. All statements of unbelief that will lead you right down the road away from God. Look for reasons to, not reasons not to. Look for reasons to, not reasons not to. And you'll find that God will just start infusing you 
with friends and fellowship, understanding of who he is, power, answer to prayer, blessing. You'll find an amazing thing being released from the things of this world. You'll be amazed what God will do. Amen? Amen. I'd like to, like to sing. That, that last one, that's the one I'd like to see done. Let's sing that. I don't know the words. We don't have it up there, but we're going to go along with it. It's a powerful song. The a hallelujah song, right? It's a hallelujah song. It's a victory song.